Fox Sports. We are Fox We are Ohio. We've got a dynamite pitching matchup tonight at Progressive Field. Danny Salazar gets the call for the Indians, who could really use a strong start from the flame-throwing right-hander. He'll oppose left-hander David Price, the former Cy Young winner, who owns an 8-1 career record against the Tribe. Runs should be at a premium. Next on Sports Time Ohio. Will a new day bring better results for the Tribe against their nemesis from the Motor City? We're about to find out. It's game two of this three-game series between the Cleveland Indians and the Detroit Tigers here at Progressive Field. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. Detroit has won eight out of ten so far this year against Cleveland. And, Rick, in seven of those games, the Tigers have scored first. They've been playing from in front, it seems like, all series long, and that's why the Indians just can't find a way to beat them. And that's why they play so well in this ballpark, because they hit first. And when they score first, the Indians are always playing catch-up. When you look at the starters' ERA, the Indians have an over-7 ERA. So you, they don't have a team where you can come back and hit three-run homers and score a lot of runs quickly like some teams do. So they have to play from in front. And sooner or later, the starters are going to have to say, hey, I'm fed up with this. We've got to put zeros on the board until we score. Well, let's see if Danny Salazar is fed up with it. He's pitched against the Tigers twice this year, and he's actually fared very well both times out. He matched up against David Price uh, the last time they met, and he pitched a whale of a ball game. He had everything working. He had a nice changeup. He had a good fastball. Mixed in a couple of sliders. He made one mistake, and that was a home run to Cabrera. But on the other hand, David Price, the big left-hander, 8-1 and in his career, you figure he's not going to give up much. He pitched his second complete game in a row against the Indians the last time, giving up seven hits. And this guy is just tough. You're going to get a fastball. He doesn't give up any extra runners. He doesn't walk a lot of players. He comes right at you. He's going to be aggressive. And we'll see if they make the adjustment to try and uh, get him base runners. And maybe somebody can hit a big fly. You think stacking the lineup with right-handed hitters is going to neutralize Price being the left-hander. But you saw in the video, he can paint that outside corner, which is a virtually impossible pitch to hit for those right-handed bats. When we come back, Andre not joins us to talk about the matchup between Danny Salazar and Miguel Cabrera. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by W.B. Mason, the official office supplier of the Cleveland Indians. By McDonald's, I'm loving it. By your local Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. And by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk, proud sponsors of the Cleveland Indians. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO.
score. High fly ball, deep right center field. Martinez back. He's out of room. It's out of here. Liner. Oh, what a diving catch made by Francisco Lindor. Perez with a long fly ball, deep right field. This might go. Goodbye. And the Indians are looking for some more fireworks tonight because they just haven't had enough of that against Detroit this year. And hopefully the Indians can get out of the gate quickly. That has been a problem as well against Detroit all season long. Also, that guy named Cabrera, number 24 for Detroit. You may have heard of him. He's been a pain in the you-know-what. Let's get on to Andre Knott. How does Salazar approach Cabrera? Well, you know, Danny Salazar looks at Miguel Cabrera as somebody that's a thorn in his side. No matter how his career has gone, it always comes back to Detroit and how he's dealt with Cabrera. His second career start. He was only supposed to throw 65 pitches, if you guys remember. He comes out and he strikes out Cabrera the first three at-bats. Then in the seventh inning, he comes up for the biggest bat of the game, gives up a three-run homer. That was in his second start, and he said he learned something from that. Then in his last start, he was dealing. Gets late in the game again, and he threw a ball that you can go back and forth and say was a cutter or a fastball, and Cabrera got him again. Last night, when Cabrera came up with the bases loaded, Salazar watched that at bat very closely. He says, look, I'm never going to be intimidated by anybody. I'm going to go at him. But he goes, I'm not going to mess around with cutters or anything else anymore. I'm going to go with the best pitches I have. He feels like he's got to get the fastball above the belt, and he's got to get it in to get Cabrera out, and he feels like he can do that. Over his career, Cabrera's 7 for 19 against Salazar with those two home runs, but he feels like he's not going to be intimidated by Cabrera. He's going to attack him and give him his best stuff. Well, attack him in a smart way. <laughs> you just hope that he has opportunities, you know, to pitch around him if possible. But if you got to go at him, you've got to go at him, and Danny's got a good enough fastball to do that. All right, so the Indians and the Tigers ready for game two in this three-game tilt. Danny Salazar will go to the mound for Cleveland, looking for his seventh win on the year. He's off to a terrific start this season. And we'll take a look at our window systems game time temperature on what is an absolutely ideal evening. 74 degrees, just a light breeze that will blow, be blowing from left to right. Left field foul pole toward the right field foul pole. Really nothing of consequence. Just absolutely perfect. And we had some mega storms late overnight into the wee hours of the morning but it has given way to some just delightful weather here today late this afternoon into this evening indians come in 32 and 37 and they've just sort of been stuck in this spot rick they you know they got hot at one point late in may uh got themselves right back to the cusp of that 500 mark and they've just kind of Stumbled yeah. back and forth right in this four to five game below the break even spot. They the, can't get going above it. The disappointing thing for me, they've been treading water, and it's been because it's been at home, and it's also been within the division. The two things that you have to protect and you have to do is win at home and win in your division. Yeah. Those are the two things they're not doing. They're playing well on the road. They go away from here. It's hard to figure out because it changes every year. But I'll tell you what, the home record here for the Indians, 14-22 and 22, and 13-21 and 21 in the Central, that's not going to cut it anywhere. Something they definitely have to try and improve on if they're going to get this season turned around. Salazar takes the hill for the Tribe. Let's take a look at the Detroit starting nine under manager Brad Osmus. Brought to you by Toyota. Rajay Davis leading it off. Tied for the American League lead in triples with six. Ian Kinsler bats second. Miguel Cabrera is third. Victor Martinez batting cleanup. Yoannis Cespedes will bat fifth. And he is on a blistering pace here in the month of June. Nick Castellano sixth. Then it's James McCann, Andrew Romine, and Anthony Ghost. And tonight's Northern Ohio Honda starting pitcher is going to be Danny Salazar with a record of six and two this year. He's had uh, a, a nice start to this year. 356 earned run average. He's made two starts against the Tigers. He uh, won one. The very first one, he lost the last one. He matched up against Price. He was shut out. There's not much he could do, but he pitched a good game for seven. Gave up a three-run home run to Cabrera. But 
If you look at Salazar's starts after an Indians loss, he's 5-0 and with a 291 earned run average. He's 3-0 and at home in five starts. So let's see if Danny can go out there and throw some zeros up for a while until the Indians can get on the board. Now let's check out the defense behind Salazar tonight, which is brought to you by Chrysler. And the Tribe defense looks like this. Abilis in left, Brantley in center, Moss is over in right. It'll be Urshel up on the left side along with Lindor. It'll be Kipnis and Santana on the right side. And Perez is behind the dish. Eric Cooper behind the plate. Lance Barksdale at first. Quinn Walcott at second. Crew Chief Gary Cedarstrom is down at third. Keys to the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture. Table setters in front of Miggy. Keep them off the bases. Yes. And try to get some runs against Price early. Well, the, the, yeah. The thing of it is, don't let Detroit score in the first inning where you're already down and giving Price an opportunity. Price has had uh, his way with the Indians in his career and has pitched very well in this ballpark. So, Danny, first things first, have a 1-2-3 inning or have a zero inning against Detroit in this first top half of the first. Rajay Davis leading it off. A 277 hitter on the year. And Salazar goes right at him with a fastball for strike one. Down low. One ball, one strike. That's foul. One ball, two strikes. Missed inside. The Tigers this year have batted 325 as a team against the Indians. 265 against everybody else. Well, and swung on and missed. Salazar strikes out Davis to start the game. This will be our Circle K strike. Uh, looks like a little breaking ball there. It didn't look like uh, his split change. You can see the spin there, but whatever, it's a dandy, and he gets his first strikeout. It seems like. Whenever Davis has been in the lineup, and it's been most of the time in the 10 matchups against the Indians, he gets a first inning hit. They seem to score. Yeah. He is. He's an igniter, no doubt. Ian Kinsler was two for four last night with a couple of runs scored. Just missed. And it's 3-0. and oh. Right hand goes up. Three balls and a strike. Kensler pulls it foul. <laughs> Went over and got Andre. You heard him hit him. That was in his wallet. <laughs> Kinsler has picked up a hit in 12 out of his last 16 games. And the payoff pitch is pulled foul again. This one, Dave Clark showing the quick hands. Former. Yeah, you don't see a lot of... Uh, Base coach is now trying pick balls anymore because they come a lot harder than you think. <laughs> but he snagged that one and threw it into the seats. And the payoff pitch once again is smashed to third. Urshela goes to a knee, gets up, fires it across the diamond, two down. 
Gio Urshela with another terrific play defensively at the hot corner. That ball looked like Rick, it was by him, and he just reached out and snared it. Well, here again, do you see Kinsler trying to pull everything now, but Urshela going to his left, gets down on the slide and gathered himself, didn't rush anything, made a nice, easy throw to first base. Nice play to retire Kinsler. And that will bring up Miguel Cabrera. Our stat of the game brought to you by Buick. Cabrera just ahead of Jason Kipnis in the American League batting title race. He is also leading the American League with 52 runs batted in. Two and zero. Oh. Back out of play. Cabrera, back-to-back -back MVP awards in 2012 and in 13. Two-one pitch. Flips it to right field for another base hit. And the two-out single will keep the inning alive for Detroit. That makes that makes Cabrera now, Matt, 14 for 18 in this ballpark this year. High fastball. And that's what he does with it. He can get on top of it, and he lines it that way. He's that strong. So now 14 for 18 in this park. It will bring up Victor Martinez. Victor had just one hit yesterday, but it was a big one. A key hit in the Tigers' four-run fourth inning that allowed them to pull away. Ground ball in the hole, but Kipnis from the outfield grass with the shift on, able to throw him out and end the inning. No runs, a hit, a man left, and the Indians are coming to bat. Progressive Insurance. Jason Kipnis in the leadoff spot. Francisco Lindor batting second. Then it's Michael Brantley. Ryan Rayburn, Carlos Santana, and Mike Avilas occupy the middle third. Brandon Moss, seventh. Giovanni Urshela, eighth. And Roberto Perez, who homered last night, will hit ninth. Yeah, tonight's Northern Ohio Honda starting pitcher, David Price. For the Tigers, and Price is uh, having a nice year, 6-2 and two at 250 ERA, 88 strikeouts in his 97 in the third innings. 
And he is 1-0 uh, and in two starts against the Indians this year. No decision. And then he beat him the last time. He shut him out on a complete game. And you can see with the Rays, seven starts, 5-1 and in a 3-12. But in his four starts as a Tiger, he's 3-0 and and a .61. He's been almost unhittable. Jason Kipnis has been unstoppable. So this is a good matchup. The league's second best batting average. He thought it was high. It's called a strike. 346 for Kipnis coming in. He's hit in 17 straight games overall, 26 in a row here at home. Driven to deep right field. That'll be a base hit. He's going to turn and hold with a long leadoff single. Jason Kipnis continues to take opposing pitchers apart. 18 in a row, 27 straight here at home. Boy, this guy just continues to to marvel. I mean, he gets a fastball middle in, and he turned on it, hit it so hard he could only get a single because well, what Davis. About the, how about the perfect ricochet for yeah, Davis? Well, that's what I'm saying. One hopper, and he makes a perfect throw. He had to hold up. He was thinking double all the way, but just hit too hard. Played nicely by Davis, but it's a good start. <laughs> Rajay, he couldn't have thrown it off the wall to himself any better. Yeah, I know it. That was perfect. It's almost like he had a ball in his back pocket. Let's see what Francisco Lindor is doing here. He lines one toward left field, but right at Cespedes, who will make the catch one away. Let's check out the uh, Tigers' defense now that we have an opportunity, which is brought to you by Chrysler. Cespedes in left, Ghost in center, Davis in right. Castellanos gets the start at third tonight. Romine at short. Kinsler at second. Cabrera at first. McCann doing the catching. It's a Tigers defense that turned two double plays last night. It's the 17th time this year that the Tigers have turned multiple double plays in a game. And all said, they've turned the third most double plays in the American League. Here is Michael Brantley. Interestingly enough, Rick, and I don't know if there's anything to this or not, but the Twins have turned the most, the White Sox are second, and the Tigers are third in the American League. Well, you've got to have ground ball pitchers if you're going to turn the double plays. You know, the Indians have a lot of strikeout pitchers, guys that yeah. swing and miss, so they're, they're going to have fly ball pitchers more than ground ball pitchers. You look at them a few years back, they had the ground ball pitchers. but Brantley shoots it foul. Michael with 21 doubles tied for third in the league in that category. He was one for four last night and his one hit. Knocked in a run that tied the game. And yeah. three all in that third inning. Low and away. One ball, two strikes. For a big guy, Price delivers a ball to home plate relatively quickly. He gets it there. He'll give McCann a shot. Some left-handers, you can read or get a jump on. It doesn't look like it with Price. Did they finally settle on the change up there? Well, right before Brantley stepped out. See if they come right back to it. Yep. Yeah, he did. Change up to the lefties. And he got him to chase it in the dirt. Yes, he did. So that is the second out of the inning. Let's get out to Andre. 
Well, to a man, the last time the Indians faced David Price, they said, look, we're going to be aggressive with him because he keeps the ball around the plate and he throws a lot of fastballs. Today, when I went around the clubhouse, most of the guys said the same thing. They go, look, they took 93 pitches to get rid of his last time, but we still felt like we hit the ball well other than the double plays. They feel like they're going to stay aggressive, but it's been very interesting this first inning that Price hasn't thrown all fastballs so far. Well, well Rick, he's after making that last, adjustment. that swing and miss by Brantley, it looked like Michael looked up at the board and right field to check the speed because maybe he was fooled by the pitch and he wanted to see, what well, was that a changeup? It was a changeup. You know, it was almost yeah. like it kind of surprised him. He expected a fastball. Uh-huh. It was a changeup. He gave up seven hits. But you watch the changeup. A lot of times they never used to throw changeups to left-handers. They were afraid of making a mistake in there, but that one was down. And you don't see Michael swinging at pitches out of the strike zone, so he was fooled on that pitch. Ryan Rayburn looks at a ball down low. Rayburn 0 for 3 last night. And a 1-1 hit in the hole. Base knock. Left field. Kipnis stops at second. Rayburn pulling it between third and short. Second hit of the opening frame for Cleveland. And it will give Carlos Santana a chance to bat with two on and two out here in the first. Well, there you go, Ryan Rayburn, and he's going to continue to hit left-hander. So the second hit in the inning keeps it alive for Santana. Rayburn in his career against at Price has done a decent job. In 292, he was 7 for 24, so he's now 8 for 25. Now, Carlos Santana trying to shake out of the the June Blues. In his last 16 games this month, just eight hits for Santana. Two on, two out. The yeah, one pitch. Fastball missed away. Well, this is when you want to get to David Price because his ERA in the first inning is a, it's a little over five, 5.14. So when you get guys on, you try and get a big base hit. But the Indians this homestand have been terrible with two outs. They haven't had a lot of hits to keep innings going. But one could do it. Just one could loosen it up. Strike called. Santana falls behind one and two. Well, Price went away with a fastball and missed. Came in over the inside corner and hit. Lazy pop to shallow right. Davis coming in, makes the catch. No runs, two hits, two men left. No score after one.
along with MLB.com at bat on your smartphone or tablet. You can stay connected with live radio broadcast stats, breaking news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Well, we go down to the second inning, and Joanna Cespedes will lead it off for Detroit. Cespedes was three for three last night with a homer, and he drove in three runs. Home run he hit was a solo shot, but he also had a sack fly. Well, he dropped the head on a low fastball there. Also had an RBI double in the first inning. So he was active throughout the game. Foul right back, nothing in two. Cespedes is currently seventh in the American League with his 308 batting average. And he and Michael Brantley both tied for third with 21 doubles. Here is the 0-2. Out of play to the right. Nick Castellanos waits on deck. And it's low, one ball, two strikes. Back to even at two and two. He's trying to get him to chase the secondary pitches. See if he goes with high heat above the belt. Little tapper. Salazar will take it himself and flip it to first. One down. Another off speed pitch. A injury report brought to you by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk and around the major leagues. Let's take a look. Nelson Cruz is day to day for Seattle. Jared Weaver, I saw he went on the DL with a hip injury. And Freddie Freeman down for Atlanta with a right wrist problem. I'll tell you, all in all, when you look at Atlanta, a team thought to be sort of in a rebuilding mode after John Hart came over and started making a, a number of different moves. They're sitting there at 500, only two games behind Washington in the NL East. Well, that's the problem is Washington has been coming back to the pack, you know, with the injuries that they've had. You know, and the Mets have stayed around. They're one game over the 500 mark. So that division's been a little scary. You knew the East was going to be have some problems and issues with Philadelphia. Miami has struggled, but Washington was supposed to be the elite and the best, and they've – Stuck around the pack. Yeah, they have They've been able to run away and hide. In. Swing and a miss. Castellanos falls behind him. One and two. Come back with a slider. He's gone to more sliders early in this game, I think, to these instead of just the the splitter. Is that simple adjustment, having faced him Showing twice Showing maybe something different early in the game where, he, you know, I don't think he threw that many the last time. Usually it was been fastball oh. a changeup, and that might have been the change or the splitter right there, which is his changeup. He baffled him. Second strikeout for Salazar. See, this is the difference here. That's It's his changeup, but he, he throws it as a, a splitter. Almost like a fork ball where it sits in between the fingers and it's got great movement. You can see that mm -hmm. rotation. So that slider away, that fork or splitter in. 
You know, it, it all depends on what you call it. I don't know what he calls it. Does he call it his splitter or split change? I thought he called it his changeup. Well, th- then that's it. He throws it like a splitter. Because I remember talking to him in spring training when he showed us his pitch grips. And he was calling it a changeup, but the way he throws it is right. really unconventional compared to the, you know, the circle changeup that you see most guys throw. Because not a lot of guys can throw it like that without yeah. hurting their elbow. And the circle change, I would think, is easier. But it has great movement. It has movement going down. The bottom falls out of it. James McCann is sitting with a 3-0 and count now with two down in the second inning. There's a 95-mile-an-hour heater right down Broadway, 3-1. and one. Came right back with another one, and it's a full count. I don't know if it's by design or just the way the game's unfolding, but you know, Danny's 34 pitches, 19 strikes, 15 balls, so he's he hasn't been just straight out. Here comes the full-on fastball attack mode. Maybe he's had the Tiger hitters off balance because of it. One, two, three, they go in the second. down here at the ballpark $13 district ticket presented by Sports Time Ohio get yours today tickets available only at indians.com Mike Avila is going to lead off the bottom of the second for Cleveland and David Price with the first pitch strike. Avila shoots it over the top of the dugout and up into the seats. Yeah, you go into protect mode now down in the count 0 2. This guy has a lot of weapons he can put you away with. Good fastball. He's got a tight slider. He can throw the curveball and also a changeup. 
But he doesn't mess around. A lot of times he'll come right at you with the heat. He locates it, move, pitches in. Missed inside that time, one and two the count. This year, right handed batters batting 225 off of Price. Left handers hitting 268. So lefties have fared better than uh, the right handers have. Hard to believe. But you see, that's what he does to, to, to even it up with the right handers. He's not afraid to pitch inside. And he has good enough control. He wants to check the count. Right at the shortstop, Romine. And a perfect throw across, one away. Let's go back down to Andre as Brandon Moss comes up, lugging an 0 for 23 up to home plate. Yes, and we know with Brandon Moss, and he admits it sometimes, when he gets in these slumps, and we know he goes up and, up and down, that it becomes mental for him. And he says he misses pitches that he should hit, and then it messes up his whole at bat. He told me today, he goes, I'm going up there with a clear conscience, and if I bring it up to him again, he was going to punch me. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Tell him to stand in line. <laughs> you know, that's what happens when you're struggling and, and you're, you start thinking too much, and then finally you get to that point where you say, I'm not going to think about anything. I'm just going to go up and see the ball and hit it. And sometimes that works where you just free your mind, open it up. You put too much pressure on yourself like you're you have to hit everything, and when you fall off a pitch, you get in that bat, you struggle. He's always been, since we've seen him here this year, Matt, an aggressive guy. He likes to get after the first pitch. And this is how it goes when you're 0 for 23. You yeah. walk up there, oh, and the two. next thing you know, it's no balls, two strikes. Yeah, that's – well, one thing I want to see him do that he hasn't done recently is try to use left center field. He tries to pull everything. You get pull happy, you can go down, and he has struck out. He leads the team in strikeouts. He's struck out a boatload of times. Two down here in the second inning, and for Brandon Moss, that is strikeout number 73 on the year. All right, now think about this. He has two strikeouts, both of them coming against left-handers and both on the changeup. So he doesn't necessarily have to throw that slider to the left-handers. He can throw the changeup, and they think it's the heater. Well, Price on the day, seven for seven, first pitch strikes as well. So that always helps. Giovanni Urshela takes down an in ball one. See, you mentioned it, and he throws a ball. Urshela one for three last night with a run scored. Price falls behind here, 2-0. and oh. High pop. That's going to go foul. You know the thing I've always noticed about David Price is that with the center field camera, when he goes into his glove as he's about to go into his lineup, he's constantly moving the baseball in his glove. And I know a lot of pitchers will do that just to keep hitters from figuring out what they're going to throw. But, I mean, he's moving that ball around in his glove as he's going into his windup before he secures the grip for yeah. whatever type pitch he's going to throw. Yeah, there he is. He works it in there. And, you know, you other people are watching too, and he's still – Settling it till he gets to the pitch to he, that he wants. I mean, it's something obviously that he's done for years, so it's it's well, perfected. His full windup though is like a stretch. You know, he's in there. He's getting a feel for the baseball on what he wants to throw. He pretty has a pretty good idea what he wants to throw before he even shakes. There was the changeup, and it was pulled foul. 
But, you know, that's something you as a hitter, you would sit, you would in the dugout, you would watch. And if a guy did the same thing every time he threw a curveball, you could see him twist his arm, boom, then you've got it. And you can pass that along to the hitters. You would hope so, but a lot of times this is supposed to be out of the full windup, but it's really not, you know. it's Sometimes they would raise their hands a little higher Uh on a breaking ball and they cut it off on a fastball or vice versa. You know, you could do Uh whatever. But he's out of the stretch, so you can't pick anything up there. Jammed him, and Urshela rolls at the second. Indians go one, two, three. After two, no score here in Cleveland. Ballpark app to unlock special offers, including merchandise discounts. The app also lets fans purchase tickets, transfer tickets to friends, and more. Visit indians.com slash ballpark app. Andrew Romine, the leadoff for Detroit here in the bottom uh, or in the uh, top of the third inning. Romine batting eighth for Detroit. Swings at the first pitch and sends a long drive to right field. Moss back on the track. He's at the wall, and it is out of here. Andrew Romine with his second home run of the season. Gives Detroit a one to nothing lead. Of all the bashers in this Tigers lineup, not the guy you expect to pull the trigger on a home run ball. No, but, you know, he gets a fastball, and let's look at the location of it. There it is. It's a challenge fastball. Here we go, and Romine beats him. Andrew Mar- Romine hits his second home run of the year, and Detroit will take a lead. That ball had a little carry to it. Salazar, it's only two times. That's his 12th home run given up. In only two starts this year, he has not allowed a home run. One against the White Sox on the 21st and the other against Seattle. Other than that, he's given up a homer in every start he's made. Ghost grounds it to Kipnis. And a second baseman throws him out one away. Time for our Levin Furniture player profile as we take a look at Rajay Davis. He says, all the way through school, I can count on less than one hand, less than one hand, mind you, the number of teachers who pronounced my name right the very first time. (laughs) Well, I'm sure a lot of people had to ask him, right? Uh, How do you pronounce that? (laughs) 
Is it Ponsoon or <laughs> Ponson? Raj A. Raj A. It means king in Sanskrit. Chop foul, third base side. Davis uh, really credits his parents with helping him to achieve his dreams as a baseball player. He said, you know, when I was a freshman in high school, I was acting up in school, and my mom made me, she took him off the team. She said, that's it. You can't play if you're not going to get uh, the grades in your schoolwork. There's Good consequences. So that's it. He said, man, I learned a lesson real quick. And he said, I was acting like a clown, and he said, that was a lesson I learned the hard way. Well, good. She stuck to her guns. Mm -hmm. You know what? And Not enough parents to show do you, that. Yeah. Goes to show you, you want to play baseball? Well, then shape up. Uh, and it's good he learned because uh, he's, he's a good baseball player and lesson in life as well. 3-2 pitch. And he takes ball four. Boy, not by much. No, that was a close pitch, but this is the guy you don't want to walk because uh -huh. he can run. You know, it looked like it was a little off the plate away. Let's take a look at it. It was just off the plate. Good pitch. But as a hitter, if that ball is called the ball on pitch one, you want to call the ball on ball four. Out comes the oven mitt, and he says uh, he, he hears about it all the time, whether it's from fans or opposing players. But it is a, it is a protective device mm -hmm. that keeps him from jamming his fingers when he slides into the bases or, he said, from – one guy slapped that tag down yep. on your hand real hard. You see, he's, he's going at such a speed from first to second, stealing bases. It, it, it does jam, and you, you need protection. Guys, if you go head first, they can drop knees on your hands or your fingers, and you can do a lot of damage. I'm surprised he doesn't have two on. He says it's good for bacon on the bases. <laughs> <laughs> bacon on the bases. That's good. Like a pizza glove. <laughs> Fouled right back by Ian Kinsler. Tommy Bow gave me the uh, the stat, that home run to Romine. He hits in the number eight hole. That's the fourth home run that uh, Salazar has given up to the number eight hitters this year, which is the most of any slot, which is surprising. Swung out and missed, and Kinsler goes down hacking. Third strikeout for Salazar. Two down here in the third inning. Danny made quick work of Kinsler here with a good slider trying to pull. You know, and he uh, he's changed recently. Uh, you talked about it last night, his approach earlier in the year compared to what it is now, and you can see he's dead pull compared to what it, what yeah. it was. Yep. No question about it. Miguel Cabrera with a base hit in the first inning. Flipped one in the right field. Takes a fastball low and away for strike one. Up in the air, slicing down the right field line, and that is going to go foul. Was not deep enough to do any damage. And Cabrera, uh, Cabrera's in the hole 0-2 now. Well, that young man's got himself a nice souvenir. Off the bat of a someday Hall of Famer. I don't think he recognizes it yet. You know? No. <laughs> You've got to teach him that. The 0-2. Throw to first instead in a close play. Davis just beat the tag of Santana back. Well, good job. You want to pay attention to him here.
It's a tough time of day for first baseman, base runners, with that sun coming in. Do you see that little buggy whip throw from Salazar that time? I haven't seen that move. There's a look at that sun. Yeah, that's a little, that's bright looking over there and trying to pick up a move. Umpire's looking into it too. Swung out and miss. He tied him up. Nice job by Danny Salazar. Strikes out back-to-back -back hitters here in the third to end the inning. But Andrew Romine's solo jack puts the Tigers up 1-0. Just a reminder, as you enjoy a cold one, stay tuned later in the game for Miller Time, brought to you by Miller Lite. Roberto Perez is going to lead it off. He had a good night. Yesterday went two for three with a double and a home run. Yeah, that home run coming in the ninth inning off Soria. Solo shot with two outs. David Price with a 1-1, one -one, and it's way outside. That ball smashed down the right field line, and Roberto Perez might have extra bases. Davis trying to dig it out, and he will, but not before. Roberto Perez goes into second base with a leadoff double, his third hit in the series, and all three have been to right field. All three have been for extra bases. That was a really good swing there. Roberto put it, I mean, a line drive. See, he stayed on it. That ball was coming middle in. But, boy, that's a good approach. Line drive to right field. Like it a lot. He gets a double. That'll be his fourth, so there you have it. Indians coming back trying to respond. Detroit has always been the team to respond to the Indians. Here's one right here. Get him over, get him in. Jason Kipnis stands in. 
Kipnis with a base hit to right field his first time up. Swung out and miss. It's funny, as Kipnis was climbing in, Dave Clark was in the dugout trying to get Davis in right field to go over toward left, uh, right center field. And I'm sure counterintuitive in Davis is my wait a minute. The last time he hit one, he hit it over toward the line. So uh, why should I go away from where he hit it the last yeah, time? Yeah, they're going to pitch him differently in this at bat. He threw a fastball. Kipnis got a fastball middle in. They're not going to throw him pitches down there. They're going to let him try and hit it to left field. They bunch him toward left and left center. Kipnis showed bunt, pulled it back, and it's called a strike, and he can't believe his eyes. This is one situation. I know what Jason wants to do here. He wants to get it, do his job, move the runner from second to third. But I don't want to give his bat up in this situation early in a game to move a runner. For, for a rookie, now, I want you to swing the bat. I mean, you're the hottest hitter we have and have been for the last two months. Swing the bat and try to pull the ball. Don't, don't give up an out. Don't give up your at-bat. So now he's got he's to work hard. He's down 0-2. And a foul right back with a good fastball. It was, that was letter high, if not higher. He did a good job just to get to it. Kia in the driver's seat. Jason Kipnis now with an 18-game home hitting streak, 27 or 18 overall, 27 in a row at home. He's hitting, and that's that's my point. That's why he shouldn't bunt. Don't give up your bat. Your bat's way too important to this lineup to give up and out. And he could pull a ball. Just a bit low. Good take. Uh, that's a tough take. Tough pitch to take, but you see him shake his head mm -hmm. after the umpire call it a ball. <laughs> I mean, this is a tough pitch to lay off with two strikes. And it was down. It was a good take. He see that's how well he's seeing the ball. And this is uh, one tough left one tough ombre on the mound, a left hander, left or on lefty. Not an easy at bat. One two pitch. Little tapper. Okay, still got the job done. Price can't come up with it. Everybody's safe. There you Perez go. Perez to third and Kipnis down to first. Price had to hurry. He went to a bare hand attempt and he didn't come up with it cleanly. And that enabled Kipnis to reach safely. Give him a hit. He's two for two. That's what you do. You battle with two strikes. And that was a great pitch by Price. It was out of the strike zone, but Kip wanted to get it done and with the bare hand, you can see he's upset at himself because he did rush it. But with Kipnis going down the line, you feel you have to rush it. He wants to get an out. So he doesn't feel that clearly. Indians will have runners at the corners and a great opportunity. And uh, another multi-hit game for Jason Kipnis. Moves him into a tie with Prince Fielder for the most in the league. And Francisco Lindor. With a chance to tie it now for Cleveland with that tying run 90 feet away. Middle infielders double play depth. Corner infielders at the bags. In the dirt and a nice stop by McCann. Lindor fly to left. Hit the ball sharply his first time up, but he hit it right at Cespedes in left field. That's well, not a breaking ball either. That, that had a little steam on it. I'll tell you what, he was lucky to pick that ball sure right into the webbing. He thought it was going to come up higher than what it did, but he was able to keep a hold on it.
Lindor shoots it foul. And they count one and one. Tying run, Roberto Perez. He's at third. Jason Kipnis, go ahead, run at first. <laughs> Rendor to right field. Davis will make the head high catch. Perez will tag. He's coming home. Davis's throw, not in time. Kipnis has to hold it first. Well, he could be on, he should be on second base there because that ball, no chance did it have at hitting the cutoff, man. He should have been back to tag and gone to second when he sees it's launched over there. They get the job done. They get the sacrifice fly, but you can take an extra base here. Anytime, as I say, he's just sitting. He's got to get back to and tag. And once you see the ball is up in the air and it misses the cutoff, man, you could be on second base. Lindor gets the RBI. It's his third. And the Indians tie the game here in the third inning. And one on one out from Michael Brantley. Well, they come back and respond. It's a good thing. In for a strike. Brantley struck out swinging in the first when Price crossed him up with a good changeup. Price lobs the throw to first. Kipnis not far off the bag. One one here in the third is Kipnis back out there aggressively off the bag at first. Brantley got his fastball, but fouled it off, and it's 0-2. Price has had five 0-2 counts already. Well, Rick, he's thrown 31 out of 43 pitches yeah. for strikes. Yeah, you get out there, he's, he's around the zone. That's why you have to be aggressive with this guy. When he gets you down in the count like this, he, he's that much tougher. He can expand the zone and make it so hard as a hitter. Brantley sends one up the middle. Kinsler out of the glove, and they turn two. But the Indians tie it on the sack fly by Lindor. 1-1 one, one after three.
Four, five, and six hitters do up for Detroit. Sometimes because of our travel schedule, the mail runs a little bit behind here at the ball yard. <laughs> and we want to recognize Mr. John H. Margison of Raleigh, North Carolina, a longtime Indians fan, saw his first ever game in League Park. One of his most cherished possessions is a Lou Boudreau autograph. Wow, nice. And uh, he turned 87 back on June the 11th, so we're 11 days late getting his letter. But, John, we appreciate you tuning in. Yes, he says, we do. He says he gets all the home game telecasts at his place there in Raleigh, North Carolina. So belated happy birthday wishes, and thanks for tuning in every night. By the way, John, they delivered the mail with an alpaca here today <laughs> right outside our door. They spit on Tommy Bo, but they got us your letter eventually. Victor Martinez, a ground out, his only time up back in the first. And they count one and one. Shut down inning here for Danny. Now, last night, that's when the roof fell in. Indians scored their three to tie it, and Detroit erupted for four. The first five all reached. Yeah, and the thing of it is, though, they scored in the first three. You know, single shots. You yeah. know, one, one, one. Not to be denied, but. Two and two the count. You know, you look at this matchup and the way these two have pitched against each team, and you you would expect low scoring going into this ball game. You know, two to one, three to two type of game. Three two pitch hit pretty well, deep right field. Moss on the run won't get it off the wall about three fourths of the way up. And Victor Martinez slowly slides into second base with a leadoff double. You know, that was a vicious line drive. That thing came close. It got out in a hurry. So they get their first double, their third hit. And Martinez gets his fourth double. There it is, a little two-seam fastball out over the plate that Victor gets the barrel ahead of the bat out there. No chance for Moss. Retrieve it, get it in quickly as possible. So now Detroit's going to try and get him over and in. Joanna Cespedes, a comebacker, his only time up. Oh, Cespedes. He was trying to knock one up into the bleachers, yeah, and it's so 0 much, 2. So much for get him over. He tried to get him over, get him in, and himself in with that swing. Well, he likes the breaking ball. You, that's why I like yeah. to see him power. Power him belt high or above. He may have a good swing, but he can't catch up to Danny's heater up there. Last night he hit the home run off Bauer. It was a low fastball, and it was middle of the play. Don't throw it down. You elevate it. And he will chase. He'll, he'll chase fastballs up there. And once you get him looking up there, you can change his eye level, and then you can go into the dirt with your, your change up or your slider, and he'll chase that as well. Now Perez going back out. He, he goes well, out there a lot. It's the only time we've had a runner at second base tonight, and I think that's why they're probably. And it's a former catcher. I want to make sure that they're on the right set of signals here. I'd like to see him come one more time upstairs with a fastball.
Oh, what a pick by Perez. Tremendous pick. As he's going out to try and block it, he gets the bonus and it goes in his glove. You know, with a man on second base, the last thing you want is a wild pitch, but they go slider. But a nice short hop and a nice pick by Perez. There's the off-speed pitch, but Cespin has just spit on it. Full count. This is the fifth full count for Salazar tonight. The payoff pitch. And a foul back. Cespedes has hit in 14 of his last 15 games and is batting 390 with 14 runs scored and 11 RBIs during that stretch. Swing and a miss. Salazar went right back to the breaking ball after he spit on it 2-2. Two and two, He went chasing and strikes out on the 3-2 pitch. Fifth K for Salazar. Well, he continues to go to the off speed, and he gets Cespedes to finally swing and miss it. There you go. The change up over the top. Out number one. Nick Castellano struck out his first time up, and he takes a fast or an off speed pitch, I guess, for a strike. Castellanos 0 for his last eight. Boy, a lot of off-speed pitches tonight. The 0-2. That time he wouldn't chase. Forty of the 66 pitches for Salazar have been strikes tonight. But it seems to me he's thrown a lot of purpose pitches tonight. He's thrown a lot of balls out of the strike zone, either A, just to keep them off balance or to see if he can get them to expand their strike zone. Yes, and, and for me, he's thrown a lot of off-speed pitches to change up the sliders. Normally, he goes, he's much more aggressive with his fastball. He's, he hasn't been that way tonight. It's almost like he's picked his spots with the fastball. Right. Show it to him. But his is, you know, when he's, there's another break, a uh, changeup. And he strikes out Castellanos. That's a half dozen Ks for Salazar, two down in the inning. Comes back with the uh, change, gets a swing and miss. So back to back strikeouts. Wow, that thing, you could see that ball literally. Great shot, by the way, guys. Just tumble out of his hand. As it came toward home plate. But the hitters geared up for 95, 96. Well, you have to be. James McCann, a ground out, is only time up. And now he comes with the express to get ahead. Got in on him, fouled his back and out of play, but it's 0 2. (laughs) 
Victor Martinez with a leadoff double here in the fourth. But Cespedes and Castellanos both went down swinging. Will McCann be the third straight? Yes, he will. A called third strike, number seven on the night for Salazar. We are tied at one, middle of the fourth. Chris Sale going to pitch tomorrow for the Chicago White Sox. He's on a pretty good run lately, huh? Do you think? That is unbelievable. Last five starts, 12 or more strikeouts. That's very impressive. It was tough because he went eight shutout innings. He came out in the ninth and they got beat. Texas scored two in the ninth inning to beat the White Sox two to one in that game. But he has been on, uh, on some kind of a roll. White Sox, by the way, have lost eight out of ten. They're nine games below 500, two games behind Cleveland right now in the Central Division standings. Ryan Rayburn, base hit his first time up. And Price lays it in there. It's two and one. Rayburn yanks it left field near the line. Gets down. Cespedes cuts it off right in front of the wall, and Rayburn goes in sliding with a leadoff double. Second inning in a row. The Indians started off with a two-bagger. Well, Rayburn, he's two for two on the night, his 11th double of the year. Almost looks like he was looking for something inside because he, he spit on that 2-0 heater. That was a slider, back foot slider, and he had to be waiting for it because he put a nice swing on it. He took the 2-0 pitch that was right there. And uh, he knew it. he got what he was looking for, and he did some damage to it. So lead off double again, back to back innings. Carlos Santana fly to right his first time up.
Up and away, 2-0. and Santana thought about offering. He thought it was too high. He tells Eric Cooper, but Cooper says, no, it's a strike, two and one. Inside corner, and the count is now even at two and two. Ryan Rayburn, the go-ahead run in scoring position here in the bottom of the fourth. Price kicks and deals, and Santana strikes out. Third K for Price, one away. Well, we're back here at Progressive Field tomorrow afternoon for the series finale against the Tigers. Justin Verlander will go for Detroit. Carlos Carrasco will go for the Indians. Our coverage begins at 11.30 with Indians Live, and then every pitch starting at high noon right here on Sports Time Ohio. Here's Mike Avila, so ground out his first time up. Way up high, ball one. Well, Santana failed to get the runner over to third. In a 1-1 ball game here, Avilas takes inside. It's 2-0. Third straight 2-0 count in this inning. Rayburn took the fastball, hit the breaking ball. Santana took a fastball, change up, and then swung at the breaking ball. Avilas fouls one off to the right. Well, Rick, it just seems like whether it's just perception in my head or reality, when the Indians have had some decent counts, a lot of foul balls instead of barreling well, something We started up. the game, Andre said they, they wanted to be aggressive off them. Well, okay, you get the count in your favor, and then you can see. you you got to go after that pitch unless they're looking for something else. Upstairs, 3-1. Brandon Moss waits on deck. Avilas awaiting a 3-1 pitch. And a smash by Romine in the left field. Rayburn will have to stop at third. That ball was scorched by Mike Avilas. And it got to Cespedes in the blink of an eye. So no chance. For Rayburn to get home there. No, but a good at bat by Avilas right here. He got a ball to his liking. It looked like a change up down, and he roped it. He tried to throw him the 2 0 change up. He fouled down the right field line, but he laces this one in the left field. With Cespedes out there, you just hold up. You see, he gets to the ball, uh, to the ball before Rayburn yeah. gets to the base. 
So it's first and third now with one out. Well, and here's Brandon Moss. Another situational hitting opportunity. Yep. Moss struck out his first time up. This is where, as a hitter, when you are struggling, that you really try to do too much because you want to get that run in. First at bat, Moss was down 0 2 before he knew what hit him. Pulls it foul. You know, these numbers might not mean a whole lot in this particular at bat just because of where Brandon's at right now. And you're, you're stuck in an 0 for 24. He talked to Andre before the game saying, oh, he's just trying to clear his head, go up there and not think. But this is where he's done some of his best work this year with less than two outs and a runner in scoring position. 10 out of 32 for a 313 average. And 18 runs batted in. With those 10 hits, so. Well, let's hope that prevails and it gives the Indians a lead if he can get them in. Swung on and missed at a fastball, and it's 0-2. Well, he was going to give him a fastball. It wasn't on the plate at all. I mean, he got him to swing and miss, so second at bat, second straight, Moss is 0-2. Watch this one have some run to it. It was outside. Not that it was a bad pitch. It was a, not a hitter's pitch. Definitely not a pull pitch. Right. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's another thing. It's pull, pull, pull. You've got to start using left central. Down low. One ball, two strikes. Ryan Rayburn, the go-ahead run, 90 feet away. Mike Avilas across the way at first base. That last pitch was the fastball away. He could afford to throw it down and not let him try and hit it in the air. But remember, his first at-bat, he struck him out on a changeup. See if he comes back with that. In the dirt, blocked again nicely by McCann. He's done that a couple of times with a runner at third tonight. It's two and two with a rookie, Giovanni Urshela, waiting on deck. Pulled foul over by the Tiger dugout. A run on six hits so far for the Indians. One run, three hits for Detroit. Tribe threatening, though, here in the fourth. Moss wants the fastball away, and or Price wanted it away, and that's where Moss is able to get to it and foul it back. He had a good swing at that one. That was just a little too high. It had much more of the plate than I think he wanted. But he tried to get him to chase one up and out. And another block by McCann, full count. Another changeup. 
Tomas, boy, doing everything in his power after being down again 0-2. He's worked it back into the count. 3-2. He looks like a guy who's kind of fighting for his life right now, doesn't he? He is. Trying to get that, uh, that runner home. Price having a little conversation with himself as he walks back onto the mound. Fighting tooth and nail here in this key at bat. We're only in the fourth inning. But a pivotal moment potentially right here. Oh, he rings him up and Moss cannot believe it. Tell you what, I have not seen Moss show much, if any, reaction to home plate umpires this entire season, but he was quite vocal about yeah. his displeasure with that call. Yeah, well, he held his, uh, he restrained himself because that's a breaking ball up. He ends up getting the call, and he just does not agree with it. And you know what? I have a, I agree. But it goes as out number two, strikeout number four. And so with two down, Giovanni Urshela will be the batter. Spins away. Rick, we saw Tampa play Urshela with a three-man shift on the left side. To, to pull it, yes. And, I mean, he's just a young kid just starting out. Interesting in that they would already have an alignment for him. But it seems like when we've, we've seen most of his hits, he gets the head out, and he's pulling it between third and short. Yeah. Well, they're playing him straight up here. Maybe they're going to pitch him the way that they see fit where he's – Go ahead. We'll like you to pull that outside breaking ball if it's if it's where it's supposed to be. You know, defenses line up with the way they're going to be pitched, and if pitchers don't hit their spots, then a lot of times they're, they're, <laughs> it doesn't matter where a guy's going to be playing because they're going to hit them anyway. If you locate your pitches and you hit it hard, you're going to hit it hard into the teeth or the strength of the defense if pitched correctly. Well, Urshela has the count in his favor, 2-0. And, oh. and that's low, count. three balls, no strikes. With the red-hot Roberto Perez waiting on deck. Jeff Jones, a pitching coach, looks on. Been a long inning for Price, even though this is only the fifth batter. Yeah, fifth batter, and he's had 4 2 0 counts. Now, where he usually works the count from. Comes back and gets his first strike. Already 26 pitches this inning. Urshela awaits the 3-1. And he goes foul the opposite way. Full count. Two on, two out, 3-2 pitch coming. Avilas will be off at first. 
And a pop foul out of play to the right. Well, let's try it again. Tampa Bay just left here, right? That is right. And uh, what pitcher were we talking about? Uh, it was uh, that was the supposedly slowest. The 27 seconds in between each pitch. Was it the Ramirez kid? Um, Arasimo? Yeah. Was it Ramirez? Uh, was that him? Oh, Colome. Colome is who it Alex was. Alex Yes, on Sunday, and he pitched a great game. Well, Price is not far behind. He was second, right? That's right, in pitches. So now you wonder why when you get oh. runners in on the corners, which uh, he takes forever. You foul it off, and he's going to go right back and get into his routine. He takes, and, you know, coming from Tampa, a lot of their pitchers pitch like this. Really slow the game down. Perez just now, or rather uh, Price now, just now looking in to get the sign. He's at 28 seconds right now. You got the stopwatch on Yeah, him. that's a foul back. Well, that's a, now this will be the fourth. Third or fourth 3 2 pitch. Here we go. <laughs> what do you think we got? Rafael Betancourt pitching? <laughs> now, that was against Detroit. Remember when they called the ball that on him right. when we were in uh, Detroit? Right. Yes, I do. Years back, ago? Back then, was that Jim Joyce, maybe? I don't think so. It wasn't his crew? No, no, no. <laughs> Jim Joyce or Detroit is famous I, yeah, for yeah, something yeah, yeah. else. <laughs> not, the, not the slow pitch, Kyle. 30 seconds right now. 31, 32. Runner goes and, and let's another do foul it back. Again. We're having so much fun. we got to do it again. This is great. 31 pitches in 20 minutes. Well, you do the math at home. Well, as a hitter up here, after what he called on uh, on Moss, you don't want to take a call third if it's going to be around the plate. You want to swing the bat. Got a man on third base. They had an opportunity. Lead off double. And then uh, Price was able to strike out Santana. Avila's got a base hit, and then he struck out Moss. 35 seconds. The pitch delivered, and it's drilled. There you go. Deep center field. Ghosts on the run. Gets there in time, and the inning is over. Oh, Urshela gave it a ride, but Ghost ran it down, and the Indians strand a pair. is brought to you by your Northern Ohio Honda dealers. By the Cleveland Clinic. Call for an appointment today. And by the game-changing all-new Ford F-150. The future is tough. One-one our score. 
fifth inning. Danny Salazar is on a pretty good roll right now for the Indians. Those guys got to love what they're seeing from this fireballing right-hander. He's had five of the last six batters down 0-2. He struck out three in a row and five of the last six. Andrew Romine got a fastball, though, that he hit out of the park for a solo homer. That's the only run for Detroit so far. And this time, wouldn't you know it, he shows bunt and takes well, the ball Well, that's one. because he wasn't sure. They're, they're going to play him back. He, he just threw him a cookie the first time up. A fastball would get me over strike one, and he hit it out. And he lines this one to left center. That's in the alley. And Avilas can't cut it off. Romine's in the second. He hits the bag and pulls up right there with a the leadoff double. Yeah, 2-0 count. He's gonna, he knows he's going to get a fastball there. Second so, inning in a row, Rick. The Tigers have a leadoff double. Yeah. Well, and Danny just says, here you go. A little two-seam fastball down in a way that Romine stays on. Give him credit. He pulled the first fastball, goes the other way, so he has a homer and a double in his first two at-bats. Same thing happened last inning, but uh, Salazar tightened it down and struck out the side. Now Anthony goes to ground it out, his only time up back in the third. He takes a pitch, and it's ball <laughs> one. <laughs> that surprises you? Yeah. He is. He loves the fastball on first pitch. He's a very aggressive hitter. Well, he's probably looking something he can pull. Right. Looking That's a end. much tougher pitch yeah. to do any damage with or to, to try and roll it over when it's coming at about 95. Off-speed pitch miss, 2-0. and oh. Outside corner that time he dotted the fastball. It's two and one. Oh, he caught him in between, and mm -hmm. it's two and two. He sure did. Let's see what that is. Is it the uh, change or the slider? No, Whatever. More You're, like he, the slider. That he time. was caught in between his right. Thinking he was getting the heater. Foul back out of play. It's a foul ball over toward the Indians dugout. Danny Salazar now hits the 80 pitch mark. 49 of those for strikes. 2-2 Two -two to ghosts. Swag and a miss. He strikes him out. Got him with an off-speed pitch that just kind of floated, but that's his eighth strikeout of the night. Yeah, you see that pitch. It looked like he it was up and away, which it was, and Ghost, Ghost upset. Wants, he chased he, the ball. He wants to hit himself with his bat, doesn't he? Well, a lot of times hitters get themselves out. You know, they're trying to do a job, but he expanded his strike zone. Now it is uh, another strikeout, so it's the last four outs have come on the strikeout pitch. They'll make it wait. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. 
Top of the order. Rajay Davis. He struck out in the first. He walked in the third. And we were talking about Davis earlier in the game. You know, the one thing about him, he was not an overnight success story by any means. He was drafted by the Pirates. He was a 38th round pick at that. And then the Giants uh, traded Matt Morris to the Pirates in 07 to get Davis from the Buckos. But they only kept him around a year, and then he, they designated him for assignment in April of the following season. The very next day after he was designated, the A's claimed him. Wow. They know a bargain when they see one. Yeah. And, you know, that's when all of a sudden you started seeing him. We started to see him. It's like, yeah, there's something about this guy. He doesn't play a lot, but when he does, boy, he makes things happen. Yeah, he, he had the opportunity to play. He, he can run. He's turned into a pretty decent hitter for the top of the order. Tough out. Eventually, the Blue Jays sent a couple of pitchers to Oakland to get him in the offseason after the 2010 campaign. Danny Farquhar was one of those pitchers. And then he really kind of came into his own with Toronto. And then he became a free agent, signed a two-year deal with Detroit. Swing and a miss. It's two and two. Well, right-handers today off Salazar, one for 11. And the only hit was Cabrera back in the first inning. And normally right-handers have hit better off Danny than left-handers. This year, righties hitting 253 coming into today, where lefties were hitting 231. Checked on a ball that was up high. He was on a 3-2 pitch that Davis drew his walk last time up. This payoff pitch is fouled out of play. And he walked him again. Second time tonight. That is playing with fire when you put this guy on base, even though there's already a runner aboard. Well, those are his only two walks in the game. I know you don't want more guys on there because you know who's on deck. So maybe he can get Kinsler to hit a ground ball. He did his first time up. Grounded out to third. It was a nice play there by Urshela, though. You know what I just realized? He doesn't have a fly ball out in the game. Yeah, five right. ground ball outs. The rest are all strikeouts. Inside ball one. Wow. Even Danny took a long look in after that pitch. Two balls, no strikes. Well, he, he better make a couple of quick pitches, or this could be uh, an extra long inning. Three and oh. You see who's uh, looming on deck. And it's ball four. Bases loaded on back-to-back -back walks to the two guys in front of Miguel Cabrera. See if Callaway comes out and says anything. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, 
In-game recap brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Andrew Romine led off the third inning with a solo home run. That's the Tigers' only run so far. Indians got a leadoff double from Roberto Perez in the third, and he came home on this sack fly by Francisco Lindor. That's been it so far. But now the Tigers have him loaded up with only one out, and Miguel Cabrera is knocking at the door. Don't let him in. If you're wondering, Cabrera has grounded into a team leading 11 double plays this year. Well, you're right. You, you have to. He grounded into one last night. You got to get him to to hit a ball at somebody. Now, Mickey, I, you know what? They they got to go at it because Callaway was talking about. I think a pitch earlier. That's what I was looking for, and that's why he was waiting for a while. Eric Cooper. I didn't see if he ejected Callaway. I'm assuming he did, and that's why Terry Francona out there quickly. And now Terry Francona is absolutely incensed. Francona is giving it to Cooper. Mickey Callaway did get the heave ho from Eric That's Cooper. That's why I think they waited long enough when they were on the mound. So he's got his, uh, he's, he's fighting for his pitcher on uh, pitches. And then he tosses them, and then Mickey's going to go back and have his say. Well, let's see if that gets Salazar fired up a little bit here. He bounced it in front of the plate, ball one. Little tapper back to Salazar. He'll come home. No, he drops the ball. Unbelievable. That is a tailor-made inning-ending double play ball, and somehow Salazar threw it before he had it in his hand. The that, Tigers take the lead. The bases are still loaded. That would have been a 1-2-3 double play, no question about it. But, I mean, you just give your catcher a nice feed. You should be able to get Cabrera, and the ball falls out of the hand in the transfer as he's coming home. You couldn't ask for anything any more than right here. But once it falls out, there's no baseball. And off comes Perez. That's got to be an error on Salazar in the inning. Just move everybody up. Now Victor Martinez. We have seen some flat out goofy things this year with the Indians playing against the Tigers, and that one might take the cake. Yeah, that's uh, the, you're out of the inning. One, two, three, double play. He could not ask for anything any more than that. After the back-to-back -back walks and now an error, it's set up. But you got to damage control. Bloop to left center. That's going to drop for a hit. That's going to get another run home. Base is still loaded as Davis scores 3-1 Detroit. Martinez is two for three. He's got another RBI. Three against the Indians in the first two games of the series. And you're playing in a little bit. And then here's the bloop right over the head. Falls in, Lindor can't get there. Measly little single, but it plates a run. Yoana Cespedes is 0 for 2.
Outside ball one. Just now getting some action in the Indians bullpen. Looks like Zach McAllister. Low and away, 2 and 0. Oh. This crowd has just gone silent as well. I think they're well, scratching their head it's going, well, really what just been, happened? It's a weird inning here. You get the lead off double, he comes back, he strikes out Ghost on, on a nice at bat in the sequence. And now, you know, the, the error. They're going to try gonna, to score two. Here's sure, the throw, gonna... cut off, throw to the plate, not in time. Two more come home. It's a four-run fifth for Detroit. And now they are just rolling with it. That's going to be the end of the night for Danny Salazar. They're going to push the envelope here because they have the lead and make a good throw. Brantley's throw is cut by Santana by the time they relay it home. Cabrera slides in safely. So two more RBIs for Cespedes. And it's a big inning now for the Tigers. Salazar goes just four and a third here tonight. And the double play ball that he botched himself costs him dearly. Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen for Zach McAllister. He's coming on when we come back. Now Danny Salazar, this one didn't go the way he wanted it to. I mean, for no. four innings, he was typical Danny Salazar, very good. But that ball, that comebacker off the bat of Cabrera, you work so hard to make your pitch to get the Especially result him. you're looking for, and then you self-inflict. He's going to have nightmares on oh, that tonight. Yeah. He, he won't sleep all night to get to that play right there to get out of the inning and keep it a 1-1 game. Instead, it opens the door, and the Tigers have kicked it in. They lead it 5-1. to one. First and second, still only one out. And Zach McAllister will face Nick Castellanos. And he rifles one down the right field line. That'll head to the corner. Victor Martinez will score. Cespedes right on his heels. He scores two. And it's a two-run double by Nick Castellanos. And that closes the door on Danny Salazar's night. As he is charged with all seven tonight. First pitch. He doesn't mess around. Shoots that fastball. It's on the inside part of the plate. And laces it down the line. Well, Victor comes in and then Cespedes is right behind him. 
A six-run fifth, and they're not done because there's still only one out. Second straight night, an Indian starter's giving up seven runs to the Tigers. Bowery did it in three. Salazar now, it's four and a third. James McCann is the ninth Tiger to bat in the inning. Good fastball, and it's 0-2. Missed outside. By the way, the Indians... Made a roster move earlier today. They designated Scott Atchison for assignment and recalled Austin Adams to the bullpen. It was not really a surprising move. Atchison just, just hasn't had it this year. A 686 ERA in his 23 appearances. And it was just time to... Make the move. Well, a guy that's been going uh, up and down, what, three or four times this yeah. year. Austin Adams is back. And Atchison Hayes, a solid, solid guy. He was a good teammate. Had a tremendous year a season ago. He earned what he got. As the strikeout is out number two. In terms of the, the contract that he got from the Indians, he earned that. But this year, for whatever reason, Ricky just... Never really was able to get on track. Spent some time on the DL, came back. And when he was reactivated and when he had opportunities, it was just more of the same. Mm -hmm. Andrew Romine doubled and scored to start this inning. Let's go down to Andre. He has more on the move earlier today. Obviously a tough move for Terry Francona because he has a great relationship with Atch. But he said the one thing that, it, that worked against him is he never was able to get his breaking ball down. Every time he threw it, it seemed to get hit and go for runs. And he said right now Austin Adams can help them more. They like his poise, his competitiveness, and that he can get it up to almost 100 miles an hour. That doesn't hurt, does it? Well, no, he's got good velocity and a nice slider. One ball, one strike, as the Tigers have batted around here in the fifth. Two balls, one strike. Callister steps away. <laughs> now the 2 1. Broke his bat, popped up. Urshela says, I'll take it. And the inning is over. Tigers bat around. They batter the Indians for a six spot and lead it 7 to 1.
kids tickets start at just ten dollars for kids 12 and under with the purchase of an adult ticket kids tickets located in the new family deck here at progressive field just log on to indians.com Roberto Perez doubled and scored the Indians' only run back in the third. He had a nice head bat to start that inning off and laced the fastball away right and. He's been using the right field, right field line. Letting that ball track deep, and, you know, you don't get a lot of playing time, and that's a lot harder to do, although Gomes has been out for the last few days because of neck issues. David Price with a fastball for a strike, evens the count of one-on-one. -on -one. You know, when, when Gomes was on the disabled list, he got all the playing time, you know, and you started to see, well, boy, he... Doesn't look like he can get out there every day, but you can sit back after he had an opportunity and he got a chance to play every day. You can sit back and you look at the game differently. You know, when that regular goes back in there, and it can certainly help you as, an, as a regular getting all that playing time and the opportunity. You realize it, it's hard to do, so play every day. Now the one-two pitch and a foul back. Well, I think, too, it's one thing if you're Lindor or you're Urshela and you're a rookie and they say, hey, we're gonna, you're going to play every day. Just go out there and right. do your thing. It's tough enough, you know, at this level, first time around. And then you add to that for a Roberto Perez. And granted, he had some playing time last year, but you add to that the catching duties in addition to trying to get up there and make something happen offensively. And you can see where... It might take a while. Well, first priority, this kid never hit in the minor league, so first priority is catching the staff, calling a ball game, throwing out runners. And he's done that. He's done a nice job doing that. But now, you know, when, you, when you're on a team that you need to score runs and you got to hit, it's glaring. You know, when you don't hit. Yeah. But he's going to be at the bottom part of the lineup. He's done a fine job, really. Swung out and miss. Price gets the strikeout. That's five for the left-hander. One down here in the fifth inning. Our great clip of the game from last night. Jason Kipnis. Two more hits, including a two-run double that got the Indians going. Part of a three-run inning that helped them tie the game. Kipnis is already two for two tonight. 18 game hitting streak overall 27 in a row here at home and now 28 multi-hit games tied with prince fielder for the most in the american league 20 hit 28 hit multi-hit games and this is game number 70 yeah think so. about that pulled foul I mean, we already talked at length how good his month of, of May was, you know, because of the 51 hits. But you look into June, and he's got 26 hits. So he's going to get to the 30 mark. Pretty Price gets another strikeout. He's... They gave him a bunch of runs, and he's starting to feel it now. Let's go for a Mazda game break. Here's Al Pulaski. Hey, Matt Rick. Let's head to Minnesota where the Twins are taking on the White Sox. Eddie Rosario got Jeff Samarja here in the first inning, his fourth homer of the year. That made it 1-0. Just now the Twins have scored a second run. It's 2-1 Minnesota over the White Sox. Fourth inning. Guys? Royals are in action later tonight in Seattle. Kansas City began the day with a three-and-a-half game lead over Minnesota in the division. 
Francisco Lindor fouls one back. Lindor drove in the Indians' only run in the third with that sacrifice fly. Chopper to short. Scooped by Romine. Indians go 1-2-3. 7-1 Detroit. We've got a noon game tomorrow. Bruce Drennan will be talking tribe here at Progressive Field with a special guest from the game, and he'll go behind the scenes at the Velisano Celebrity Bartending event inside the district. Drennan oh, yeah. live tomorrow after the game here on Sports. Time, That's right, Ohio. That's down in the corner down there after the ball game for about three and a half hours after the last pitch. Anthony goes 0 for 2 on the night to lead it off for Detroit. Pop foul that might find the seats, and Urshela can't get to it so it'll be a foul ball down and in two balls and a strike How about Ghost lost a bat? You don't have to go back to the backstop to retrieve it. There it goes flying. He's got gloves on and everything with the I don't see pine tar on him, but they can use a, a stick em or a claw that they have that keeps it very sticky. Popped out of play. Two and two. The count on Anthony Ghost. Two 
Swing and a miss. He strikes him out. One down. Let's bring in Andre Knott here. The the Indians, okay, we talked at length about the Tigers' dominance against the Tribe. They're 8-2 and two on the year. They're 19-5 and five, oh, since 2013 against Cleveland. But in particular, Andre, yes. why have they had so much success here in Cleveland? This is something Victor Martinez said after last night's game. This is a quote. He goes, we know we're not going to go 162-0 and when we come to Progressive Field, but mentally we feel more comfortable in this park than any other park other than our own home park. That tells you their mindset. They like coming here. He says their fans come in here, and they all feel like they hit well here, and it shows up when they get walk into this building. They should just bring their white uniforms when they come here, the way they play here. Well, the question is, how do you break that spirit? Because that's, that's a, the spirit that they have right now when they come here. That's well, what yeah, I want to know. That's a belief. That's, well, it, it was there today. An error ended up opening up the gates in this one. But I, I don't know how you break it. you got to go out and you got to match up against them. you got to beat them for one thing. Yeah. Back-to-back strikeouts for McAllister. Well, you got to keep them down to about three runs. And you, you'll have a much better chance. They continue to just score against the Indians. Starters ERA over seven. I think maybe the more important question is why do the Tigers play so well, or at least seemingly so well against the Indians, and yet against the rest of the league, they're just a 500 club. Actually, I guess if you took away what they've done against the Cleveland, they're less than 500. Yeah, yes, quite a bit. Back to the screen, it's out of play. Well, here you go. I mean, we talked about it at the outset when we were coming on to set everything up for this ball game. Detroit in the Central Division has the best record. They're twenty-three and twelve. Okay, in the Central, and at home, Detroit is just eighteen and eighteen. They're eighteen and sixteen on the road. Go figure that. Usually they dominate in their home park. They have it this year. Right field, Moss makes the catch, and the Tigers go one, two, three. favor of Detroit. Bottom of the sixth. Three, four, and five hitters do up for the Indians. Michael Brantley, Ryan Rayburn, Carlos Santana. Breaking ball and a foul back. Brantley struck out on the first. Bounced into a double play that ended the third.
you know, getting back to what we were talking about before we went to break there, if you take away what Detroit has done against the Indians, they're 28 and 32. Mm hmm. And that just does not seem to compute. Uh, I agree with you. The, you. You look at them, you're thinking they, they have a, a really good lineup that you have to try and get out and that they work opposing pitchers. you got Price. You, you, Verlander's been out. He's been on the disabled list, so he's coming back. And, and they've got some decent pitching. You just wonder. And, and, you know, maybe it is just what Terry Francona, maybe we're making more out of it than there needs to be. And Terry said before the game, you know, we seem to bring out the best in them. And maybe it's just that simple for whatever reason. To left field over near the line, Cespedes makes the catch for out number one. As promised, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Ryan Rayburn getting the start of the DH spot tonight and handling the left-hander David Price. A single his first time off and then a double in the fourth inning. He's two for two. Rayburn now 28 hits. And 89 at bats against the left handers. Up and away. I mean, Rick, I, I, I'm thinking back 1990, I want to say it was 1996, whenever Buddy Bell took over in Detroit. The Indians won every game against the Tigers that year. Every single game. They didn't they have the unbalance. 12, no, they played about 12 games, they, I think. They, they, beat, they beat the stuffing out of them. But they did that to a lot of teams that year. You know, it's one thing when you are clearly the best team and you just kind of dominate the league, which... That 96 regular season Indians team did. They Obviously, they got upset in the playoffs, but during the regular season, they You dominate more than one roll. team. Right. Yes, I know. You're right. So that's where this Tigers thing, at least to this point in the year, and, and granted, hey, they, I guess they've got the talent. They could catch fire and still. Yes, they can. But to this point, it hasn't happened. Santana. Singles into center field with two outs here in the sixth inning. Mike Avilas, one for two on the night. Out of play. To right field. Pretty well struck, but Davis runs it down in deep right field to end the inning. Six complete. 7-1 Detroit.
www.cleveland.com to learn more. By Levin Mattress, located in all Levin Furniture and freestanding locations. And by AT&T U-verse, has more channels on the go than cable. Seven one Detroit. And the Indians go back to the bullpen. Austin Adams will come on to pitch here in the seventh inning. McAllister went an inning in two thirds. Adams with a live arm and he can rush it up there. We've seen him hit triple digits. Miguel Cabrera one for three on the night fouls the first pitch out of play. His last at bat is the difference in the ball game. Yeah, you're absolutely right. He hit a ball that looked like it was going to be a double play and get Danny Salazar out of a jam in the fifth instead. A run scored, the bases remain loaded, and then, like the night before, the roof caved in. Swing and a miss, it's 0-2. Try to get him to chase. And he shoots it in the hole right side for a base hit. This was the play back in the fifth. Little off the end of the bat, little tapper, and the ball just fell out of the hand of Danny Salazar as he transferred it to go home. It would have been a one, two, three double play, and he's in, he's in shock. Then a little bloop from Martinez kept it going. And then uh, Cespedes with a base hit, two RBIs. And the roof caved in. They ended up putting six runs on in the fifth inning. In there for a strike. Popped him up on the infield. Urshela, the third baseman. One away. And we'll bring up Joanna Cespedes. But it's a swing and a miss. Again. Low, but he chased after it. It's 0 and 2. Twins laid the White Sox two to one. They're in the sixth in Minnesota. 
Royals in action later tonight in Seattle. There's a fly ball to right field. Moss camps under it. Two away. You said Chris Sales pitching tomorrow there, huh? Okay. It's a day game as well. Tampa Bay beat Toronto 4-3, to three, the final score. Down in St. Pete, Rays will maintain their lead in the AL East. Yankees-Phillies tied 3-3. New York again back at Tampa. They're in the fourth inning in New York. Baltimore leads Boston 6-3. They're in the seventh. The Orioles, two and a half back in the AL East. Indians' next road trip after tomorrow will send them to Baltimore. Then to Tampa. Four in Tampa. And then to Pittsburgh for interleague play over the 4th of July. It's been a while since we've been to Pittsburgh, right? Yeah, I think six years. Ground Nine. ball is short. And that'll end the inning. Stretch time in Cleveland. 7-1 Tigers. Seventh inning stretch. Brought to you by Spitzer Auto World. Checking out tonight's game down on the seats. They're coming up after Jensen's the ball a game. taller one. Indians Live presented by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. We'll have the highlights and break it down from the corner set. Brandon Moss going to lead it off here in the seventh. He has struck out twice tonight. Well, his last time he worked a really good at bat to a 3 2 count and didn't like the call from Eric Cooper. And I had a tendency to agree with a breaking ball mm -hmm. inside looked up. But he was rung up anyway. One ball, one strike. And that's when the runners were at first and third. So it was a big, it's it a was key, a big key call spot in the game. Yes, there was. Fly ball, shallow left. Charging in Cespedes makes the catch. Well, this is this is where the game turns. First and third, one out. Moss, he had a heck of an at bat. He ends up being rung up on a pitch he thought was ball four. And then Urshela crushes one. Maybe a thought was in the gap. Ghost runs it down. Tigers come up to bat, lead off double, then a strikeout, and then a walk, a walk, bases loaded, the air that we showed you. When Cabrera hit a ball that looked like it was a double play, and that's that's how quickly this game changed. Yeah. So close on the Indian side, and so far on the other side when the Tigers. It's yes. just been that kind of season series between these two clubs. What can go wrong 
has gone wrong for the Indians at the most inopportune times. That is true. All season long. Urshela rips one. Foul. Boy, Castellanos was right there on it. It did not miss by much. And he was planted and waiting to make the throw. Then he heard the foul ball call. Out of play, right side. All kind of action in the Tiger pen. Over 100 pitches so far for Price. Right up the middle, Urshela. Smacks it into center field, and he's got his first hit tonight, second hit in the series. He just waited back. and Yeah, just take there. It's a nice line drive stroke. Nobody on, and he goes right back up the middle. Look at Price ducking to get out of the way. Eight hits now. They had seven hits the last time they faced Price in Detroit. And... Uh, it, he completed the game with a shutout, but tonight he's not. That's not going to happen. He's at 105 pitches here in the seventh. Roberto Perez doubled and scored. The Indians only run in the third. Foul right back. Seventy-five out of 106 have been strikes tonight. Bond in the hander. strike zone, boy. He had that one inning, and that was the fourth inning where all the 2-0 counts were coming up. He had four of them, I believe. But he was able to wiggle his way out of it. Well, and then, again, in a, in a sign of what has been just a frustrating period for Cleveland offensively, they got the leadoff double from this guy, Roberto Perez in the third, Kipnis, a little infield tap single. So you get first and third, nobody out in the third inning. And all they managed was run one mm -hmm. run. First and third again in the fourth inning with one out. And that's when everything changed. They couldn't get that run home. And the game went south immediately thereafter. Two balls and two strikes. Not that he's had a ton of at-bats, but coming into tonight, Roberto Perez was just 5 out of 28 against lefties. But he slammed that double to right first time up. And that led to the Tribe's only run. He's three for five now in the series. Two two. Strike three called. 
Seventh strikeout for David Price, and there are two down here in the inning. Well, it looks like he's just coming at him with a fastball here, and uh, there it is and on the outside part of the plate. It looked like Perez might, might have been looking for something else. So it'll be the seventh strikeout victim against David Price tonight, and that's two outs here in the seventh inning. Jason Kipnis, two hits on the night. The American League hits leader with 96. And make it 97. He's got a three-hit game as he sends that one to the wall and right. Urshela in the third. He'll stop there. Jason Kipnis with another double. That's his 23rd. And at least for the moment, he has the league lead in doubles. It's going to be our McDonald's. I'm loving it. Kipnis just puts it. It looked like the changeup. He was able to get some lefties with the swing and miss on the changeup. He didn't get Kipnis. He lined it down into the corner. His third hit and another three-hit game for Jason Kipnis. Leaves runners at second and third. Look at this. 11 times, three hits. That's not <laughs> that's not an easy thing to do. Start of the night tied with uh, Brian Dozier of Minnesota in doubles with 22. So depending on what Dozier does, Kipnis might have the the outright lead in the double category in the AL when the night is over. David Price's night is over. He'll leave with two on and two out, and the Tigers up seven to one. about so far this year he's putting together a fantastic season but unfortunately the Indians don't have much to feel good about tonight down 7-1 against Detroit Al Albuquerque on for the 29th time this year he's got Francisco Lindor coming to the plate with two on and two out Lindor drove in the Indians only run in the third with a sack fly Base hit here could cut the gap 
to four runs. Low and away, two balls and a strike. Out goes McCann. Giovanni Urshela singled with one out. Then Kipnis, the two out double. Second and third. And Lindor lines one left center field, caught by Ghosts. And the inning is over. authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Well we go down to the eighth inning. Bottom third of the Tigers order due here. Austin Adams, who worked a scoreless seventh, will pitch the eighth as well. Though the Indians do have action in the pen. The Indians have out hit the Tigers today nine to eight believe it or not. But the big difference is the seven to one score. Six run fifth inning for Detroit. Well, our uh, our fellow Major League team down in Southern Ohio knows exactly how the Indians feel. Reds were up on Pittsburgh four to nothing when the Pirates exploded for a seven-run fourth inning, capped by an Andrew McCutcheon home run. Pirates lead Cincinnati seven to six. Fouled right back.
<laughs> Mikel Franco is at it again for Philadelphia. Is he really? He had a what, four for five last night. Three run homer just put Philadelphia ahead of New York six to three. That was off CC Sabathia. Oh. Good fastball threw it by him. Strikeout for Adams, one away. Tonight, after Indians Live, it's an all-new edition of the Tribe Report with Al and Jensen. They'll look back on the past week of Indians action and let you know what's coming in the Indians minor league system. It's all straight ahead after Indians Live. Timeout for a pitching change. 7-1 Tigers in the eighth. is left-hander Nick Hagedon. Hagedon in his last five games has pitched three and a third innings. He's given up four runs on five hits. He's among the top ten in the American League in games pitched, so this is number 33 for the left-hander. And Andrew Mo Roman looks at ball one up high. <laughs> it's low. Upstairs, ball three. Bullseye. Back out of play.
Three balls, two strikes. Agonon deals, and it's popped back out of play. Trying to come back from 3-0. and oh. The 3 2. Swung on and missed. Hagedon strikes him out. Two down. Well, Rick, good news out of Milwaukee. Sounds like uh, when the Indians head to cheese country after the All Star break, we'll get a chance to see your old pal Bob Eukery return to the Is broadcast booth tonight. Good, nice. Good to hear. He was uh, sidelined for a week after being diagnosed with a mild concussion when he got. Hit by a ball during batting practice a week ago. 81 years old. Yeah, I mean, he's just, been out there. and yeah. Well, he used to throw batting practice and everything the whole nine yards when he was out there. I'm surprised he's still out there on the field, but that's Euchre. But good to hear he, he is back. Swing and a miss. And it's 0-2. Since the last time you and I were there, which wasn't even for a Brewers game. It was when the Indians right. played the Angels there in that. We were using their booth, yeah. right? Uh, they unveiled a new uh, statue of Euchre. It's in the upper deck. It's I in know. the last row. It must be in the front row. Yeah, <laughs> yeah from that Miller Lite commercial that you love. Yep. Big hopper and a short. Lindor throws him out. We'll head to the bottom of the eighth. Still 7-1 Detroit. Stay tuned for Indians Live, presented by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care, coming up next here on Sports Time Ohio. Back to the bullpen for Detroit. Tom Gorzolani, left-hander, will come on. 26th time he has appeared in a ball game, a high ERA, 21 innings. Is walk 12. He's going to face Brantley, Rayburn, Santana. Do up for the Indians. Brantley 0 for 3 on the night. Brantley takes a strike. Yeah. 
Low and away, it's outside. One ball, one strike. I see in Boston where Justin Masterson had been on the DL for 39 games, was activated, but not in the starting rotation. They've put him in the bullpen. Yeah, there were talks. He, he was not, he had an ERA of well over six, and they were not going to put him back into the rotation. Big bounce to short. Brantley retired one away. Our AT&T U-verse rewind. David Price went six and two-thirds. He literally scattered nine hits and allowed only one run. He didn't walk anybody, and he struck out seven. And so many times we've seen this, Rick, where the Indians, the walk is a key component of right. their offense. Yes, it is. He didn't give many extras. Well, the fourth inning was the turning point. The Indians had a chance. They couldn't get it done. A uh, ball hit on the nose by Urshela. They got out of it. And it turned around for the Tigers. Outside. One ball, one strike. Swing and a miss. And a count one and two. Way outside, almost to the backstop. Two and two. And he elevated the heater, strikes out Rayburn, two down. It's going to bring up Carlos Santana. Santana with a two-out single with the bases empty in the sixth. But earlier tonight, he had a chance to do some damage. Two on, two out on the first. He fly to right. Leadoff double in the fourth by Raber, and he struck out. Just has not been able to. Come through with the big hit this year. No, his average has gone down every month. From April to May, now till June. Straight up on the infield. Romine. Indians go one, two, three.
struck out our Pat O'Brien Chevrolet play of the game. He came back in the fifth inning. Bases loaded, one out. Miguel Cabrera at the plate. Looks like a double play ball to end the inning. Whoopsie. Salazar, he had it, and the ball slipped out of his hand as he went to throw it. And that changed the course of this game dramatically. Yeah, it really did. It ended up for a six-run inning, and it was unfortunate because Danny w was cruising right there. He made the, the biggest pitch he had to make to the hitter that they can't get out, and you can finally get him into a double play, and it just didn't. He had struck out eight, by the way, you know, leading yeah. up to that moment. Eight batters. Um, just like I said, it. Murphy's Law, what can go wrong will go wrong, and that, that was the story tonight. <laughs> Our producer, Jim Murphy, takes exception to Murphy's Law. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> uh, I don't know why. Yeah, we've seen it in action with him. <laughs> Just turn the page to yesterday. <laughs> what about today? <laughs> Here's the O2. And it's inside. Did he go? They appeal. He did not. Base hit. Tigers get their leadoff man aboard. Davis with his first hit. He's been on safely three times because they walked him twice earlier. Ian Kinsler. Is 0 for 3. Walked and scored back in the fifth. Hammered fouled on the left side. He dug it out. Yeah, he did. <laughs> oh, boy. Dig it out of that tarp, give it to the boy, and he's got one to go home with. <laughs> to third, Urshela picks it. Goes to second for one on the first, a double play. Now here's Miguel Cabrera. Who has singled twice. Justin Verlander, who will start tomorrow's series finale for Detroit. Cabrera shoots it back out of play, and it's one on one. -on -one. 
Hang it on. Straightens him up with a fastball. It's 2-1. and one. Noon start tomorrow as we finish the series. And the homestand. Carlos Carrasco looking for his ninth win of the year. We'll go for the Tribe. Out of play. Two and two. White Sox lead the Twins 3-2 in the seventh. Royals Mariners scoreless. Bottom of the first out in Seattle. 2-2, strike three called. Inning over. And we'll go to the bottom of the ninth. 7-1, Detroit. Side furniture. Table setters in front of Miguel Cabrera. Davis and Kinsler were one for seven, but they did score a couple of runs. And the Indians never really got to price. So bottom of the ninth, Alex Wilson on the pitch for Detroit. And for the Indians, we're going to get a pinch hitter for Mike Avilas yep. as David Murphy will bat. And then Brandon Moss and Giovanni Urshela. Murphy's been a pinch hitting machine. Extraordinaire. So far this year, he has seven pinch hits, three of them home runs, five runs batted in. In fact, three of his four homers have all come in pinch yeah, hit that's, appearances. Yeah, uh, that's surprising, but. He has been outstanding at it. Matter of fact, he hit one last night in the eighth. Murphy takes a called strike. And a base hit in the left field for David Murphy. He does it yet again. He, he just comes up. You know, and when you get off to a good start when you pinch hit, you know, it seems to, to keep right on rolling throughout the year. He's just got a confidence, and no matter what he does, he finds a way, and he doesn't try to beat you, go deep. He gets a base hit here to left field. Number 10 now for the Indians, so Murph just continues to come off the pine and get base hits. And up comes Brandon Moss, who's 0 for 3. He has struck out twice and flied to left. And he fouls it out of play. It's 
<laughs> Moss with a base hit in the right field. And Murphy will stop at second. That snaps an 0 for 26 slump for Brandon Moss. And the Indians yeah. have their first two on. Boy, that's what you want. You just want one, and once it falls, you say, yes, let me make a left-hand turn. So back-to-back -back singles. Boy, that's got to feel great. That in that little streak right there if you're Brandon Moss. Urshela, one out of three, singled to center field his last time up. Chops it foul. That's out of play down the right side. Roberto Perez waits on deck or shell it down on the count. A ball and two strikes. With the tribe down six here in the ninth. Straighten him up, two and two. He was either looking away or he just picked that up late because he reacted late. Castellanos guards the line at third. Big hole on the left side for Urshela. Tries to go that way, but it's right at Castellanos, who drops the ball, and everybody's safe. Oh, the door is open for the Indians here in the ninth inning on the error by Castellanos. Well, there's turnabout, fair play. It's a double play ball. Step on third, throw to first. And he just dropped the ball. You know, whether he was trying to rush, take a look at it. All you have to do is step on the bag. He just never comes up with the ball. So that'll leave the bases loaded now and nobody out. How did it squirt out of there? Wow. Hard to figure, isn't it? Well, it's like to play with Danny Salazar earlier. Yeah, he had the ball in his hand. It just fell out as he was throwing it to the plate. Will it be as costly for Detroit as it was for Cleveland? That opened the floodgates for a six-run inning for Detroit. Roberto Perez, one out of three on the night. He doubled and scored back in the third inning. He checks, and it's called a strike. Man, Perez, not in agreement. I believe it's Joaquin Soria getting loose now in the Tiger pen, their closer. Yeah, it is. You got it. Check. Almost the same pitch. This time it's called a ball one on one. There is Soria. Yeah, I think if Perez gets a base hit, it's a save situation. I believe.
Chopped to third. Castellanos goes to second for one on the first. A double play. This time they turn to. No misplay. And now there are two down. A run does score on the play. But that takes the wind out of the sails of the Indians. Top of the order and Jason Kipnis. Looking for his fourth hit of the night. Strike called. It's one and one. Jason has run his hit streak to 18 games and his home hit streak to 27 games. Now the one one. Foul right back. Last guy to hit 27 in a row at home. Miguel Delaney back in 1980. Out of play down the left side. The only other guy to have a 27 game hitting streak here in this ballpark was Elvis Andrus. But there's a look back. Man, hit streaks in Cleveland by an Indians player. Every home game from May 1st till now. And he'll have a chance to jump ahead tomorrow. Now, Hop Trotsky went from the end of May to August back in 1936. 1-2 is inside, and that'll even the count. Another foul out of play. That's what Kipnis does so well now when he has two strikes. He fouls off some very good pitchers that pitchers make on him to stay alive and then live for another pitch and seems to get something to his liking. But, you know, he just serves those balls to the left field seats or to down the third baseline to stay alive, stay alive until he gets something that he likes. He has 59 hits at home this year. The 2-2. And that's fouled out of play. I mean, Rick, when the day began, he had the best home batting average in the majors at 409, and he's added to that. The, ne the next guy closest to him was Dustin Pedroia, who was 44 points behind him. That just gives you an idea of how locked in he has been, in particular, here in Cleveland. And this will be the eighth pitch of the at-bat. As Kipnis tries to keep it alive for the Tribe here in the bottom of the ninth. He golfs one to straightaway center field. Deep and oh, at the base of the wall. Scoring is Moss. Kipnis into second with an RBI double. Jason's fourth hit of the night. His second double. And that's his 31st RBI on the year. As the Indians draw a run closer, it's now... Seven to three, and he just missed hitting it out of here. That ball yeah, he was did. almost off his shoot top. I know it. He, I'm telling you, he fouls him off, fouls him off. He stays alive, and he hit a ball to the base of the wall. So the Indians will end up put two on the board here. And Francisco Lindor, 0 for three with an RBI, takes a strike. Good. 
Lindor chopping it foul. Popped up foul, back out of play. Francisco Lindor. Trying to take a page from the Kipnis manual. And keep the game alive. The 0-2. Pulls it foul. Alex Wilson gave up back-to-back -back singles to start the inning. The double play ball really looming large now. Well, he might have been knocked out of this game. The 0-2 up high. Soria was up getting loose. But then one Perez hit into the double play. He kind of, he's just been standing around waiting to see if he would get called into this fray. Well, it's 7-1 to one starting tonight. You certainly don't want to have to use him. He have a noon game tomorrow, but he's up and throwing, and Wilson just can't put him away here. Well, if Lindor gets a base hit to drive in a run here, then the tying run would move to the on-deck circle, uh, I and think I think you'd, you'd see Soria. I, I agree with that. Up and away, two and two to count. Well, this will be an eight-pitch at bat now for Lindor, so he, he has indeed taken a page from the Kipnis manual. Wilson's thrown 27 pitches in the inning. 20 of them have been strikes. But the Indians have fouled a number of them off and made them work hard. Bouncer right at the shortstop. Romine throws over, and that'll do it. 7-3 is the final score tonight as the Tigers beat the Indians yet again. They've taken 9 out of 11 from Cleveland so far this year as Detroit goes to 37 and 34. Indians fall to 32 and 38. David Price will get the win. He goes to 7 and 2. The loss to Danny Salazar, who drops to 6 and 3. One bad inning did in the Indians here tonight. And on the, the bright side, the positive, Jason Kipnis continues to just absolutely tear it up. A four-hit performance tonight. He's uh, got an 18-game hitting streak, 27 in a row at home, and 28 multi-hit games on the year. That's tied for the league lead in that category as well. But in the end, it's... Another frustrating loss to a yeah. team that they have to find a way to beat, but they just can't seem to do it. Well, again, it was a 1-1 game, and then a big inning ended up, and it was <laughs> typical. Like you say, anything that can happen or yeah. go wrong against the, the Tigers usually does, but they'll have to uh, a short time to regroup and try and uh, win the last one of this series. So the series finale is tomorrow at high noon right here on Sports Time Ohio. Stay tuned for Indians Live, presented by Conrad's, coming up next.